Hey, Nick Clayton here in NSCA World Headquarters. Going to talk to you today about a great article in the Strength Conditioning Journal titled Shoulder Function During Overhead Lifting. What we're going to cover is essentially how the scapulothoracic joint and glenohumeral joint work together to create optimal mechanics, as much force as possible, and decrease injury risk as much as we can when we're doing overhead pressing. Okay, so when we start talking about overhead pressing, we want to look at range of motion at the shoulder girdle. Okay, we need about 180 total degrees. 60 degrees or so comes from the scapula. 120 or so comes from the shoulder girdle itself. Lack of that scapula upward rotation is going to be a nice way of increasing injury risk. So we want to make sure we have that. Caitlin's going to show us what that's going to look like. So if you look and we find the border of the scapula, as Caitlin goes into abduction of her arm, you're going to see that scapula upwardly rotate. Okay, it's going to go about 60 degrees. Things come on down. We also want to look for, just notice, it's going to be slight, is posterior tipping of the scapula. Let's go ahead into shoulder flexion for me. So as we get that upward rotation, that scapula is going to tip backwards. It's going to increase the subacromial space, which is going to decrease your injury risk and the risk of impingement. Okay, so we want to look at those two things. Also, what we want to look for is the slightest amount of thoracic spine extension. Let's go ahead and face that way for me, Caitlin. So as she goes into two arms, it's going to be slight and hard to see. You'll see some extension through that thoracic spine as she raises up overhead. If we need that, that's good. If we lack that, we're going to compensate at the low back. And as you'll see, so if someone's locked here, they get that extra range of motion, they're going to arch that low back, put a lot of stress to that low back. So we don't want that. Okay, so now that we know what shoulder function is supposed to look like, we want to address a few of the factors that can affect that. Now, there are a lot of factors, but the things that we want to look for that are pretty simple to identify are just bad posture. Okay, so if someone's carrying their head forward, rounded shoulders, or kyphosis, that's going to affect function. Okay, we also want to look for tightness in the pec major, pec minor, as well as latissimus dorsi. That's going to affect function and also create compensations. If you're not sure what those tests or assessments are, check the article out. It's titled Shoulder Function During Overhead Lifting. It's in the Strength Conditioning Journal on NSCA.com. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.